Well, if you like neutral teleconnections, today is your day. Today, we just focus on the things we have on our analysis charts as we make the transition to late spring. Frontal system through the Midwest and Southern Plains, winter storm in the Rockies, and a warm weekend coming up for the Northeast. And there it is, the proverbial elephant in the living room. Strong cold front moving through the Midwest and the Central Plains. Temperatures behind the front in the 40s. And on the High Plains, Denver, hovering around freezing with snow coming down at this hour. 32 degrees there. 33 up near Douglas. I don't think that's Douglas. I think that's a station near there. 31 at Casper and 30s all the way up to Billings. And this is where we have that winter storm. We have a slowdown on the interstate, Interstate 70 around the Eisenhower Tunnel between Idaho Springs and Dillon. Further to the south, Pacific Frontal System moving through El Paso, kicking up another day of blowing dust. And you can see those dew points all the way down to 4 degrees at Truth or Consequences, 20s around Tucson and Nogales. Looking at the northeastern U.S. this afternoon, finally seeing a warm-up. Many areas are in the 60s. We have 70s in Pennsylvania, into New Jersey, and even 80s into Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore. And with that influx of tropical air, thunderstorms across Ontario. There's one cluster right there, another up near Ottawa. And that's the remnants of that wave that moved through Nebraska yesterday, which we're going to cover shortly, that produced some tornado activity across parts of the Great Plains. The Great Lakes in the Midwest also quite warm. We're seeing 83 this afternoon at Chicago, 82 at Indianapolis, and even 80s into the southern tier counties of Michigan, but up north still 50s and 60s. And it was warm across the southeast today, 80s just about everywhere, even 90s across central Florida. Flood warnings continue on the Mississippi River as that flood crest from last week's rains move downriver. Currently, the flood crest is in this area here around Memphis, and it's propagating downstream at about two miles an hour. The water level at Vicksburg is expected to rise over the next few days up to moderate flood stage. And further downstream around Baton Rouge by next Friday, that's going to be coming up to a major flood stage up to 41 feet, but not quite up to the 47-foot record. This map shows the precipitation estimate over the past 30 days. The violet area is 10 inches and above. That goes from Texarkana all the way up towards Lexington, Kentucky. And these blue areas right there. Those are 15 to 20 inch amounts. So obviously the soils here are waterlogged. And when you dump additional rain on top of that, there's nowhere for it to go except in the river systems. And as you can see, a flood watch over the weekend from Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls to St. Louis, and that of course is going to dump into the Mississippi River system. And that's one reason that flood stage will be cresting at very high levels late next week. Across the southern plains, we had tropical air flowing northward. 80s across the region, 90s from McAllen to the Big Bend region, and wind advisories from Corpus Christi down towards Brownsville, southeast winds gusting to 40 miles an hour. We had a slight risk for severe weather for today. There's the layout. That's going to be for later this afternoon and evening. Storms are expected to go up along this frontal system. Currently, nothing going on. Most of what we have here is cirrus. The current high-resolution rapid refresh model is expecting convection to go up around Altus and track up towards Oklahoma City and Norman later this evening. And that could be a severe storm, the possibility of even a tornado along that if it pans out. Additional storms forming to the west, so another round towards 11 p.m., 10 or 11 p.m., and that'll track into eastern Oklahoma, and then another round a little bit further south around the Red River down towards around Abilene in the middle of the night. So kind of a busy night coming up here for the Oklahoma City and Fort Worth forecast offices. 
Yesterday, we had severe thunderstorms form in Nebraska with the approach of this strong Pacific weather system out of the Rockies. And there's the storms going up, tracking across Omaha and into Iowa. And here's a look at the radar animation starting at about 5.30 p.m., going all the way to about 7 p.m. So a couple of different supercells there, one on the tail end around Lincoln and this one here around Omaha that had a confirmed tornado near Crescent, nine miles north of Council Bluffs. And here's what the frames look like from 7 to 9 p.m. That storm on the south end, that's quite a monster there moving into southwestern Iowa. A much different situation today. We've got cold air advection flowing through the Dakotas all the way through Nebraska. Temperatures in the 40s for highs with 50s from Wisconsin down to Kansas. All of central Wyoming was under a winter storm warning this morning, including Casper, Douglas, Rollins, Riverton, and Buffalo, up to four inches of snow with 10 inches in the mountains, and that's had major effects on Interstate 80 between Cheyenne and Rock Springs, which is currently closed. Also, Interstate 25 from Cheyenne to Buffalo. Traffic was moving at last check. Let me get an update real quick. Things can change quickly, of course. It looks like everything is moving, and they reopened Interstate 80. In the El Paso area yesterday, a major dust storm. We start out this loop around 2 p.m. and run it through the afternoon. You can see that dust really picking up there. Huge plumes coming off of Deming, Las Cruces, El Paso, and additional plumes out there in eastern New Mexico. Those plumes reaching as far east as Dalhart, Amarillo, and Lubbock. And looking at the satellite picture today, they are going to get another day of dust, and it looks like it's being picked up already, but it is cloud covered, so it's kind of hard to see the aerial extent of that. Nevertheless, very strong winds through there, the dry slot right through here, and the main upper level low across the central Rockies. A highly dynamic weather pattern on the surface chart, El Paso 82 degrees, 2 miles in dust, 37 knot winds, and I think that qualifies for being in the continental tropical air, so I think the front is going to be basically about like this. And you can see the cooler air back to the west, low 70s, 70 at Tucson, that's definitely going to be rather cool for this time of year. We pick up snow in northern Arizona across Utah, and in the mountains of Colorado. Some of the precipitation in the four corners is in the form of rain. For today, tonight, and tomorrow morning, we have winter storm warnings through the Sangre de Cristo range all the way up towards Salida, that area getting anywhere from 4 to 12 inches of snow. Also, winter storm warnings in the northern mountains in New Mexico. We've got winter weather advisories throughout pretty much all of the central Rockies in Colorado, freeze warnings in the Four Corners area, and the higher mountains in southern Utah and northeastern Arizona under winter weather advisories through tomorrow. Those areas could see up to six inches of snow. And for the west coast, we have wind advisories through Owens Valley, Death Valley, up into the northern Nellis Range due to north winds gusting to 45 miles an hour. Strong cold air advection in the back of that Central Rockies weather system, also strong northwesterly flow off of northwest California, prompting gale warnings that goes through tomorrow morning. Saturday morning, we'll see the roughest conditions out in this area right here. Gusts to 40 knots and seas 12 feet. And surprisingly, in the northwestern U.S., warm weather anchoring itself over the Willamette Valley up to Tacoma, 70s this afternoon, also 70s in the Columbia River Basin and in the southwest Oregon Valleys. But it gets colder as you go west, closer to that upper level low. We drop into the 60s and 50s in Idaho. So that is our tour of the weather in the lower 48. As we go into the Pacific, you can see that northwesterly flow, the cold advection off the British Columbia coast. Further north, not much going on in Alaska, but between Carcross and Skagway right in here, we have winter storm warnings from Environment Canada. They're expecting 
heavy snow and up to 40 mile an hour winds. Blizzard warning continues on the north slope from Barrow to Prudhoe Bay in Koktovik. You can see that strong northeasterly flow right there. Very cold air coming off of the Arctic Ocean Basin. Very strong pressure gradients through the Canadian Arctic. We have blizzard warnings tonight and Saturday at Resolute Bay, also at Joe Haven, which is down here, I believe. Snowfall warnings at Cambridge Bay. So if you're heading up there, pretty doubtful, but if you're heading up there, be prepared for that snow. Down south looks pretty good. They've got downslope flow there in Alberta, so temperatures coming up near 60 degrees, and most of our weather problems are in Ontario. They're expecting thunderstorms ahead of that warm front down to the south. That could dump up to two inches of rain this evening. There's a look at the radar out of Lubbock. We've got storms in the process of forming around Floydata and Crosbyton. Canadian front arcing around like that and a dry line to the south. So this is pretty close to that triple point. Here's a look at the root cause of all this weather. Strong polar front jet from southern Arizona through Nebraska. And on the backside, an upper level low centered across Utah this afternoon. And we check out the 850 millibar chart about 5,000 feet. We do have a low level jet. It is kind of veered coming up from Houston to southeastern Oklahoma and on up into the Ohio River Valley. So not really hitting that front directly, but enough moisture flowing northward to help support some storms. And let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast starting out with tonight. So that front will be sagging through the Ozarks into Oklahoma, and that will be a focus for convection. And then we go into tomorrow. It's going to be another severe weather day. We're going to be looking at the possibility for severe storms from central Texas up into Oklahoma and into the Ozarks. All hazards are possible, including a few tornadoes in central and north Texas, anywhere from Junction, San Angelo up to Brownwood, Mineral Wells, and even Denton. And a lot of rain through Oklahoma. The Weather Prediction Center has a moderate risk of excessive rainfall from Wichita Falls to around Ada and on up into the Ozarks, basically this area right there. Snow continues in the Rockies, at least through tomorrow evening. In the northeastern U.S., very warm conditions. We're looking for 80s all the way up to New York City and Boston, 70s into southern Maine. I'm not sure if they've seen temperatures that warm this spring yet. And things starting to warm up in the deserts. We do have that thermal trough through the Four Corners area. But we do see 40s returning to Denver and low 80s in the southwest deserts. Then for Sunday, this wave begins developing out there in West Texas and tracks up into the Red River region and East Oklahoma. There's the possibility of severe weather in the southern Ozarks, Arkansas, and the Arklatex. It could extend further to the southwest, although that's not really clear. The European model is the one that's been going for that elongation to the southwest. A cold front cools things down in the northeastern U.S., back down into the 50s and 60s in most areas. Cold air infiltrates Texas, highs in the 70s, from Dallas to San Angelo with 60s in the panhandles. Some warming in the northern plains as we get a little bit of a westerly component there. Temperatures in the 60s in the Dakotas and a big warm up for Arizona coming up into the upper 80s in the deserts. Then we go into Monday. Rain through the Appalachians as this frontal system moves to the east. Also, rains return to the Dakotas and Montana as another wave moves across the northern tier states. And 90s began appearing in the southwest deserts. For Tuesday, rain spreading into the Great Lakes region. Storms reappearing in the southern plains. And we'll check out the rest of the period. Looks stormy across the southern plains. Lots of opportunities for rain and storms in the panhandles. Oklahoma, so I guess chase season is underway. And another Pacific system coming out for late next week, dissipating and replaced by this other stronger system towards the weekend. No watches at the current time. However, we do have a mesoscale discussion that extends from about Guthrie off the Caprock up to Oklahoma City and Ada. 
some of the key points here, straight photographs, which favor splitting of cells, and quite a bit of instability. So we certainly have good bulk shears in place, but we don't have that strong curvature on the photograph. So it appears this will be mostly in the form of severe cells with strong gusty winds and some large hail. And then we look at the surface data. There's our storm on the cap rock. The cold front that appears to run from about Lawton southwest towards just north of Seymour to about Jayton and back towards Clovis. And then the dry line from post all the way down towards just west of San Angelo. So this area right here, that's going to be the inflow along this boundary, which is going to become active later this evening. I don't know why we have such a data hole here between Childress and Abilene. That's been a problem for decades. It's really too bad that all of this surface network has to be tied so closely to commerce and aviation traffic, and that's been a big reason why we haven't gotten too many stations in this area. There just hasn't been the demand. But from a weather standpoint, we definitely need stations there, and that would help us sample the moisture heading into that region. Uh, it does look like the uh, dew points are in the 60 degree range around Sweetwater Abilene to about 63 to 64 along 287 near Wichita Falls. So yeah, the, the flow is veered up at 850. So it's certainly not a great setup, but enough convergence along the boundaries, enough rich tropical air and even isentropic lift back behind the boundary, all of that helping to produce deep convection. And that will do it for this episode of the show. Remember, if you want to see the Monday show, which is for our private supporters, head over to Patreon and get signed up, and you will get those delivered straight to your email box or your app. And for the rest of you, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. And remember, you can also support us at weathergraphics.com, pick up a copy of one of my books or one of my software programs, all of that directly supports the program. There's nobody else involved in that except me, so that will be a big help. All right. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.